In this demonstration, you're going to learn how to work with element properties on a layout. So as you can see in this case, I've already got a layout created. Um, I've got a couple of map frames, a title, uh, north arrow that's actually pointing to magnetic north, scale bars, some textual information, including some dynamic text. So I've got a fair amount of proper, or elements that I've added uh, to my layout. Now, every item that you add to a layout is what's known as an element. Right? And all of those elements will be displayed in your contents pane. Uh, your active map frame will have a, a bold color associated with it. The rest of them uh, will not have a bold color associated with it. But essentially every element that you add to your layout is represented by uh, an element that is added to the contents pane. Uh, each of those elements has a name. Uh, there's going to be default names that are associated with these elements. And you can kind of see the default structure in place with these rectangles. So you'll see rectangle 1, 2, 3, up through 6. That's the default name uh, that's given to an element, all right? So they, they're named according to the type, and then it's, if you add multiples, they're just simply gonna attach a, a numeric indicator to them. Uh, you do wanna try to give descriptive names uh, to each of the elements uh, if you intend to, to reference those elements uh, fairly frequently. And so you'll see that some of these have more uh, unique names like uh, overview map and map title, service layer coordinates, year, right? Some of these are, are more uniquely named. And you want to try to give these descriptive names so that makes it easy to find these. You know, in this particular case, I don't have a whole lot of elements that I've added to the layout. But if you get into a situation where you've added dozens of elements to a layout, then it can get very hard to find uh, these elements unless you've given them descriptive unique names so you want to try to be descriptive with these names all right so each of these elements you'll notice that there's a lock icon uh, actually an unlock icon by default associated with each of these elements and uh, what this does is uh, i'll go ahead and select the north arrow element here so you'll see that when you select an element uh, either on the layout or in the contents pane uh, that that becomes the active element and as long as your element is in an unlocked state, you can make changes to the size and the position of these elements. So for example, right in this case, if I wanted to move the north arrow over a bit, I can do so by picking it up and dragging it. Right? I can also resize it right, to make it larger, make it smaller if needed. As long as your element is in an unlocked state, you can do that. But you'll notice that if you click on the unlock icon, it changes to a lock icon. And at this point, I can no longer select the element. Right? I can click on it, but it doesn't select it in the layout. And so anytime you lock an element, you're, you're essentially locking it down in terms of resizing it and repositioning it. And the reason that this is in place, this functionality is in place, is that once you get everything in the proper location, right? once you're satisfied with the location and the size of all of your elements, uh, you know, it often takes a lot of time to do that, right? Creating layouts is a very time-consuming endeavor. It takes a lot of time, a lot of effort. And once you've got everything in the right location, uh, you're satisfied with everything, it makes sense to lock these down so that you don't accidentally uh, resize or reposition an element and throw things off. And so that these lock, kinds are, lock icons are in place uh, really for your protection so that you don't accidentally reposition or resize one of these elements uh, once you've got things in the correct location. Now you can always unlock it if you want to move it back, of course. Uh, you, you can lock and unlock these icons as needed. Uh, but it's in play, it's there um, really for, for, for uh, just, just to kind of uh, keep you from accidentally uh, making a mistake. Now you'll notice when you select uh, an element, uh, either in the layout or in the contents pane, that you'll get a context menu that shows up uh, as part of ArcGIS Pro. In this case, it's the North Arrow context menu. And there's actually two tabs here. And they'll always have kind of a bluish background. So again, if I select something like year, you'll notice that year is a text uh, context menu. So they're, all, they're always going to be blue, right? But uh, the, the type will change according to what you've selected. But going back to my North Arrow, in, the, in case of North Arrow, I actually have two tabs that have become activated, Format and Design. If you click on the Format tab, this gives you formatting options for the North Arrow. So I could, for example, change my North Arrow type. Right? Maybe I want to change it to something that looks like this. Right? I can do that. You can change the fill, right? the size, all kinds of things you can change here in terms of size and position, arrangement, text symbol that's used, uh, and, and a few other things here. 
<clears throat> now there's also a design tab. Design tab would allow me to change, for example, from true north, map to map, uh, from map north, true north, magnetic north, right? So it allows you to make changes uh, to the type. We'll just keep this as map north. You can change the angle if you want to. So these are some of the properties that are associated with the north arrow. Uh, this is by no means a full set of properties that are assigned to an element. So you can also access what's called the element pane by double clicking on the element. And you'll see that brings up the element pane on the right hand side of your screen for the north arrow. Now, some of these properties are, uh, are going to be replicated. So for example, on design, you remember have, you can set the type, right? You can also set the type in the map frame or I'm sorry, in the element uh, pane. Uh, and so, and same thing with calibration angle. So there is some overlap uh, between the properties that you'll see on the context menu and on the element pane. But the element pane in general is gonna contain a lot more properties that can be set. So you can see that I have three buttons here for North Arrow, options, display, and placement. Under options, this is where you name your element and that's what shows up in your contents pane. And again, you know, you, you want to try to be descriptive with the, these elements. It can be a little bit time consuming when you're adding a lot of elements to your layout, uh, but it can save you uh, a lot of grief in the long run, right? Because if you, if you just go with the defaults, then you're going to wind up with uh, not very descriptive names here. And it may get hard to find some of these elements as you start adding more and more uh, layout elements. So you want to be descriptive with your name. Uh, you can control visibility from here. Uh, you can lock it, unlock it just like you could uh, from the contents pane. All right, and then some of these other properties that you're already familiar with. Uh, under display, you have the ability to, to change things like the border, the background, the shadow, placement options in terms of uh, size and position. And size and position, again, can be controlled directly from the layout, right? I can change the position. You can see as I'm changing my position, it's updating it. Uh, in, in the element pane. So, so you can, typically you're not gonna type these values in, but you certainly can, right? Change the position and height from the element pane if you want. You can also change uh, the width and the height from here as well. So you have lots of options here. Every element has its own set of properties. So for example, if I go to, uh, let's go to year, right? And so year is a piece of dynamic text. You'll see that I get a new context menu for formatting that will allow me to, to make changes to my text symbol, my arrangement, my size and position and my element pane updates accordingly. So this is a piece of text. It's actually a dynamic piece of text. There's only two buttons in this case. So I have an options button and a placement button. This being a dynamic piece of text uh, would allow me to make some changes, right? So in this case, I've got a uh, date saved. If I click on it, that brings up the dynamic text dialog box, and then I can make changes. So for example, maybe I don't wanna see the the day, the month, and the year. Instead, I want to just see the current year, right? So I can make a change to that, hit okay. Now it just changes it back to 2021. So that's one of the advantages of dynamic text is it allows you to dynamically make changes uh, on the fly. But the point here is that, you know, right, every single element that you add uh, to uh, your layout is gonna have its own set of properties on this element pane. And the element pane is, uh, a fully inclusive list of, of element properties, whereas what you get on the context menu is not going to be fully inclusive. So in this case, map frame, I've got four buttons, right? Options allow me to set the current map frame associated with, with that map. Uh, I've got display options here that allow me to set the extent and some location settings, display, placement. So, you know, depending upon the, on the element that you select, you're going to see different content in the element uh, pane. All right. So uh, hopefully this provided you with a good overview of the different uh, layout elements and, and how they are uh, positioned in your contents pane, how you interact with them, how you change the element properties. So I appreciate you joining me for this. And that's it for this time. Thanks for joining me.